The athletes are just about ready down there on the track below us for this 3,000 meters. Let's take a look at the records in this men's 3,000 meters. 15 laps of the track. Alimari Ru Yanu of Ethiopia, 727.8. That was earlier today in Stuttgart, Germany. He was ahead of uh, Choga and Kipchoge, who both went under 7.30. There's Mo Farah, very much amongst the favorites here. The 27-year-old Britain had a wonderful 2010. Holds the British record at 7.34, but last year, European Championship gold medals at 5,000 and 10,000 meters within just a few days. Fresh from uh, training in Kenya. Let's take a look at that field, and it is a strong field, believe me. He's going to have his hands full, is uh, Mo Farah. Amongst the uh, main competitors, Tejan Gebre Meskel, the 21-year-old uh, Ethiopian, second in the 5,000 here last year with 13-11. On your mark. And Tim Gebre Meskel, another one of the endless train of Ethiopian great runners in uh, in waiting 5,000 meters second place here in Boston so he's used to uh, running here there's a large field 13 athletes and if they let the pace lag much it could get a little ugly out there well just fat boys is the uh, pacemaker the Kenyan who comes from Fayetteville in uh, Arkansas 753 man he'll be pacing today we hope for about 61 seconds for every 400 meter segment so just outside 30 seconds for each lap here in boston to around 1400 meters that should set it up nicely towards halfway but i'm intrigued to see mo farah there into second place he was training in kenya before christmas then he came back to the uk and he ran across country in the snow really deep snow in edinburgh uh, this is his first track race he goes back for another race in the uk uh, next week and then we'll see just how, what sort of shape he's in for those European Indoor Championships, which beckon in Paris in early March. But a single file is suggests it's quick, Dwight. Oh, I'd love to see that because you know, these guys train very hard to run at this race. They love running in this building. There's a very appreciative, knowledgeable crowd that is watching these distance races. Actually, quite a large Ethiopian contingent that shows up here every year. And they're normally not disappointed as uh, me director Mark Wetmore brings over some very, very good runners from Africa. And the Americans really profit from this. You see a lot of former NCA and even current NCA runners in this field. Sam Chalanga in there, Nate Brannon of Canada in this field. And a very honest pace, as you mentioned, uh, Tim. Nice single file line. Well, Mo Farah has got the Olympics at home next year, the World Championships later on this year. So there's significant pressure on the young Britain there in second place. We caught up with him. There's always going to be pressure as an athlete, you know, people want to see you, they see you on TV, you win a medal, and they always want to see you do better and even go faster. But, you know, you can only put pressure on yourself, and I believe that you just keep training, keep your feet on the ground, and as long as you can do that and have the right people behind you, I believe that we can go all the way. But, you know, there is a lot of pressure, but at the same time, if you don't put pressure on yourself, there's no pressure. <laughs> well, Boyd still in the lead there with that. Uh Mo Farah in second place, Gebre Meskel in third, Nixon Chip Sabre of Kenya in fourth, and Sam Chalanga, another Kenyan in fifth, Dan Hooling in sixth place. And uh, Lewis, of course, uh, Gebre Meskel, perhaps the biggest threat here to Mo Farah in Boston. Well, you wonder how long that threat's going to last, Tim, because if you take a look down at the track, on his right foot, you'll see a white sock. That's because just after the start, the right spike came off. As a matter of fact, I have it in my hand down here on the infield, and now you wonder if Gebre Meskel is going to continue to run with one shoe. Would it be some feet, wouldn't it? You're dead right. Making the green, the green no there in third place. Gabriel Meskel, look at that, the right foot, just a white sock. That'll really affect them when they start moving, when they start motoring. 203 at 800 meters, and uh, about 303 at 1200 meters. They've certainly accelerated through this middle section. Here's a chance to look at the start of the race that Lewis was talking about with Gabriel Meskel in green. Losing his right shoe. Now watch those green spikes as they get underway. Gebra Meskel, one of the favorites here, up against Mo Farah, who's second to right, just loses that green shoe. And he cuts right across. And I'm not surprised. It wasn't the fault of the athlete that trod on his foot. Gebra Meskel cut right across too soon. Maybe inexperienced, White. Well, I don't know that it's the greatest thing to keep going. It's early in the season. This is a big issue with this very, very hard permanent facility. As you look at the shoe in the infield, this is a permanent facility, very hard track. And those laps with the bank curves, it can really screw up the skeletal system. I don't know if this is the smartest thing for him to do. 
Coming up to 1,600 meters run. That's more or less the mile they go through here in 4.04 with Mo Farah now calling the shots out in front. Gebra Meskel in second place. I'm sure Farah will have no idea that the Ethiopian has lost a shoe, but this is what Mo Farah loves. He loves to test himself. He spends much of his year now training in Kenya with a whole group of the top Kenyan distance runners. A lot of men who break 13 minutes for 5,000 meters. And he said, do you know what? There's no animosity when we're training with each other. We're, we're mates, we're teammates, we're training partners. When we get in the tracks of Europe or the USA, yes, maybe the gloves come off. But really, when we're just training and working hard, we're partners. Sam Chalanga trying to get up for these top three, but just having a tough time. The senior at Liberty, who we've seen run very well throughout his collegiate career. Gabriel Meskel continuing to hang in there. I think it's his youth that keeps him going. At 21 years of age, he probably isn't aware of these types of things. We watched this happen to Galen Rupp at the NCAAs last year in a 10,000 meters, but he had enough time to get his shoe back on and continue racing and eventually winning that race. This field's too good for that. That's 2,000 meters in 5.04.68. Mo Farah certainly turned it up a click here. Now Chip Sabre there, challenging for the lead. Now here's the danger man, the tall Ethiopian, the tall Kenyan, just taking the lead now. Ran 3.35 for 1,500 meters just nine days ago. We know he's in great shape, and I'm sure Farah was trying to take the sting out of him. But what can you see from down there, Lewis? Well, I tell you, I've been having conversations down here with some track aficionados because this Gebra Mesco one-shoe situation is a real deal here in a world championship year. And the point was brought up that he probably grew up running with no shoes back in his home country. But then the question is, and it may sound crazy, do you kick the other one off to keep yourself from being injured? But one shoe may not be the biggest problem as we might think it might be for an American person running with one shoe. Well, Mo Farah is a thorough enough athlete to do his homework, and he'll be well aware, I'm sure, that Nixon Chip Chaba, who was only 20 in December, he's a youngster, the Kenyan, is in wonderful form in the middle distances. This is the longer end of the middle distances, and Farah's got to make it count. He comes down through a blast now with three laps to run, Dwight, and this is a critical section. I think Mo there in second place. Mo Farah has got to take the lead and take the sting out of Chip Chaba. Well, he's been smart, and you just about called it about 50 meters early. There he does go to make that move. And the work has been done for him. But look at Gebra Meskal. This, again, I think this is youth. I think this is inexperience. And he may turn out being fine, and I hope that he does. But we're looking at potential very bad blisters. We're looking at some damage to the bottom of the foot. And obviously, he's just not getting the grip. One side's gripping, the other side isn't. you got to admire him for the, for the grit here. But, boy, when he has to really sprint, that could change everything. There's about a 40-meter gap behind this trio now back to Chalanga. But Mo Farah is trying to crank it up. Click by click, he's got to take the sting out of these guys. Gebra Meskel, to his credit, looks very relaxed there in second place. No sign of strain on the face of the Ethiopian in green in second place. Mo Farah of Great Britain, one of the top non-Africans in the world at the moment, has run so proudly for Great Britain and the Europeans last year. And now three abreast at the bell there. And Gebra Meskel being forced wide by Mo Farah is going to the back straight. Mo Farah, Gebra Meskel, and, Ch and uh, the Chalanga there. In third place, boy, are they pushing it on half check. Sabre in third place, and look at this, he's leaning in. It's Gebra Meskel, Mo Farah trying to give everything, but a man with one sock and one shoe has got the legs. And look at the speed of the Ethiopian there, can you believe it? What a run, 7.35.36, that is quick. Boy, oh boy, what a wonderful race for this crowd in the Reggie Lewis Centre. Mo Farah will be pleased with that run nonetheless. He's been beaten, but he'll run low 736s. It was a heck of a race. And what a story that is for the papers tomorrow, Dwight. One stop, one shoe, and one win. That is hard. That is Mo, everything Mo. you want to teach a young athlete to do. Under less than, obviously, ideal conditions look at this and look at the fight between Farah and Gebra Mesco just right right there I mean this is a race which you love to see look at this battle down this backstretch for more than a hundred meters Mo Farah tried to hold off the 21 year old Ethiopian with one shoe and one sock he has got to be in some discomfort and look at this this crowd was entertained by this run from start to finish. What a great, great story early in the season. Well, let's take a look at it again. Mo Farah giving absolutely everything. He knew he'd been beaten. A glance over the shoulder there tells that. But doesn't he look relaxed, Gebra Meskel? Fabulous running. He was world number four last year at 5,000 meters at the age of 20. He is quicker on paper than Mo Farah at 5,000. He was quicker here today at 3,000. But we've got the winner and runner-up, Lewis.
We do. Now, I've got Mo Farrell and Dehane here. Uh, Gabriel Mescal does not speak English, but I thought it's only worthy that he stand here after a performance like that. First of all, he's still holding the shoe after finishing in one with one shoe on. And Mo Farah, as you look at him and you think about the last few laps, what are your thoughts? This was unreal. Yeah, it was unbelievable. You know, the crowd made a big, big difference. Kept cheering, and Gabriel Mescal came through inside. Got a little bit bumpy, but it was all right. It's quite tight. Mo, did you have any idea that he had lost his shoe early in the race, literally right at the start? Yeah, I heard that, and I was thinking guy and he's still running all right so I was just trying to concentrate on my race but I heard on and nothing to take away from the performance that you had because it was fantastic but what do you make of the way he was able to not only continue but to close and, and ultimately nip you at the line yeah, it's unbelievable you know obviously he's a great athlete and this way he's trained for but yeah I'm sorry he lost the shoe but yeah it was a good race by you as well congratulations guys thank you thank you thank you the understanding